All right, so now we're going to talk about electrical systems for a moment. Um, primarily, we've got a battery, and most airplanes have an alternator. Okay, a few will have a generator. Okay, if I have an alternator, which is my normal system, the battery has to have some juice to excite the alternator or I get nothing out of the alternator. Okay, a generator uh, will generate once it gets to spinning and it doesn't require the battery. Okay, um, but we're gonna just pretend most of our airplanes have this, so kind of pay attention if you do have a generator. Okay, if my alternator fails, and I'm gonna have a little amp meter in my airplane that says zero plus or minus typically. If it's saying on the plus side, it means that it's charging. The alternator is feeding electricity back to the battery and, and powering up all my electrical equipment. Okay, if it's showing a negative, now I'm draining the system. Okay, I'm running on battery. How long will the battery last? Yeah, who knows? Uh, that depends on what systems I'm running. So what in my airplane is electric? Okay, obviously my lights. All right. We can argue all day about whether we want to run the lights in the daytime or blah, 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 whatever. But if I've got, if I'm on battery power, I want to get rid of all my lights. Okay, my radios. Okay, if I'm having, if I'm going into a controlled airport and I know I'm on battery, maybe I'm just going to give my heads up. Hey, I'm losing electrical power. I'm coming in anyway. So give them a heads up that they may not be able to talk to me and then we'll talk about light gun signals later but my radios are gonna go away. And then some of my instruments, okay. Um, fuel gauges. Ooh. Okay, so I, I won't be able to look at down there and see which tank is the fullest. Or they're gonna both say empty. And you're like, ah, I'm not liking that very much. So my uh, fuel gauges, uh, instruments. Which instruments go away? Most airplanes, I'm going to learn, lose the turn coordinator. Okay, uh, most airplanes, my artificial horizon and my heading indicator, or DG, whatever you want to call it, are vacuum driven and driven by the engine, but uh, my turn coordinator is an electrically driven gyro so that I don't lose everything if I have electrical failure, I don't lose everything if I have a vacuum failure. Uh, oil temperature. That's okay. Uh, usually the oil pressure is going to be a pressure sensor, but the oil temp is going to be electrically generated. And again, your airplane may be different. Don't take this to the bank. Know your systems. Uh, the easiest way to find out is get your airplane running and turn off the master switch and see what goes away. And then you're going to know without a doubt, oh, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. Okay. And then you can always, um, like I say, Sue likes it. Um, if we're flying at night, we need to have flashlights. But most of the time when we walk out to the airplane and the flashlight is not a flashlight at all, it's a dead battery holder. <laughs> <laughs> right. So understanding Nobody needs a dead battery holder in their airplane, uh, but we do need flashlights. And if you're really slick, you get a flashlight that uses the same battery as your headset. Then I can sacrifice my headset noise counseling for my flashlight. And that's kind of a fun, nice thing to do. So these are the electrical system. Uh, how does this alternator work? Okay. Uh, on some airplanes, it's gear driven on the back of the engine accessory case, and there's a gear that drives that alternator. And then there's internal guts on that alternator that tell you whether it's working or not, particularly the brushes. Okay, uh, my newer airplanes, we typically have a belt on the front, and you can go in there and you can check that belt on part of your pre flight. So if you've got the belt, make sure that belt looks normal. Okay, am I going to be able to check the whole belt? Not really but I can look at it, if I see a problem, then I'm going to anticipate having Wait, wait, a, wait, what about transponder or GPS? Um, I put them under radios. Oh, radios, okay. I was gonna ask about GPS as well. Yeah, also okay. Mary, 
what does the Cessna 172 have? It has the alternator. The alternator, the but, it's a, but it's a gear driven. Gear driven. Okay. And so there's no belt for me to look at. And I'm not going to really get in there and pull the cowling off and inspect that gear. Just a little bit beyond our, um, what we're looking at here. Okay. So uh, we've got the battery, got the alternator. All right. Um, the technology. Okay, in our 172, we've got uh, that VFR GPS, which is digital. And then I've got some old school radios in there. Okay, this battery is a 12, um, yeah, this one is a 12 volt system. Some are 24 volt. And my alternator is putting out 14 volts. Okay, uh, why do I care? Okay, I don't care. Okay, but my, uh, my newer technology, the digital stuff, if it drops down to less than 11 and a half volts, that stuff starts flickering. Okay, so when your digital stuff starts flickering, then you look up at the alternator and you're like, uh-oh, <laughs> bad things are about to happen. It's going to go dark here very soon. Okay, my old school stuff, well, typically I'm down about 10 and a half volts. Okay, so if I've got my old school radio in there, okay, my digital stuff starts flickering. I look over here at my alternator, uh, my amp meter, and I see that it's in a negative number, and I'm like, how long do I have? Not long, but I can make that one radio call. It's like, this four five Lima, we had an alternator failure. We're about to have a total electrical failure. We're inbound for landing. We're 20 miles to the northeast or whatever the situation is. At least they're expecting us if I'm going into a controlled airport. I'm going into an uncontrolled airport. Okay, um, and then my favorite question when I was giving check rides was your airport that you're going to has pilot control lighting. Okay, and now you've had electrical failure. So I'm going into this airport with pilot control lighting, which means I go click, click, click to get the runway lights on. Three clicks for low, five for medium, seven for high, typically. But if they're off until I go click, 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 and I've had electrical failure, oh, this is going to be fun because the runway is not lighted and my landing light's not working and it's dark in here and I need to find an airport that leaves the lights on all night long. That's still within the fuel range and my fuel gauges aren't working. I'm just having a bad night right here. <laughs> so if I'm planning that night flight to that airport with pilot control lighting, part of my pre-flight is to figure out where I can go where they leave the lights on all night long and how far is it and what heading takes me there. How can you tell which ones leave the lights on all night long? You can look in the chart supplement. You can look at the airport information. Okay. So but it's, it's it has that L with the little star. The L with the star means lighting limited. condition or lighting limitations exist. Okay, so an, an L without the star is they leave the lights night. on all night long. Okay, typically, but then did you check the notice for that airport? <laughs> yeah, you know, so understanding we need to do a little bit more in depth pre flight on uh, or pre flight planning when we're going to an airport, we're flying at night, we have to anticipate an electrical failure. If you're not anticipating electrical failure. You're going to be in for a rude surprise. Okay, I've had multiple electrical failures. Um, one, hey, the airplane's coming in to land. I'm in a Cessna 182. Full flaps, coming in to land. And the student turns on the landing light as we get about 200 feet. And boom, everything goes away. <laughs> Now we're 200 feet in the air, so I mean, I'm, I've got a flashlight, but it's not really all that convenient, and I'm kind of busy. And he's screaming, go around, go around, go around. I'm like, no, 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 because I can't retract the flaps. Oh. The flaps are electric. The flaps are staying down. I'm on a stabilized approach. All I have to do is not change anything. Once I'm getting ready to flare, and I can see how close the, land, the runway lights are, then I just flare and land. Okay, if he'd have done what his instinct said, he probably would have died if he'd have been alone. Because he didn't want to go around, you can't get rid of the flaps. A 182 with full flaps does not go around very well. It gets ugly. So, understand what do I lose and what position am I in? 
Again, we talked about stabilized approaches. Here's a good reason to be on a stabilized approach. Okay, it's not, it's not real common, but it's not terribly uncommon when you move something, bad things happen. Okay, you put the gear down, boom, everything goes away because it was a high electrical load. You turn on the landing light, boom, everything goes away because it's a high electrical load. So when you move a switch, that's when the ugly stuff's gonna happen. Okay, guess, oh, well, I could let you finish. I, I was gonna ask you, let's say we have this situation where we're flying at night, we feel that we're low on fuel, we can't tell exactly where our gauges are, and our only way to get down is an uncontrolled airport. And what would you recommend for some kind of emergency? I think you've told me a story about making a phone call and having Okay, a sure. I, you know, I've done this, I've had the electrical failure, and I was in a retract your airplane. Okay, so electrical failure, um, the gear is electric, I'm gonna have to do a manual extension. Okay, and you're like, well, how do I know it's down? Because there's this little green light that's electrical that's supposed to come on. So in that particular night, I had a bunch of people in the terminal building for whatever reason, and I said, go find every car that has the keys and park it perpendicular to the runway. I sent a text, and park it perpendicular to the runway with the lights on. I'll make a low pass and y'all can send me back information whether or not the gear happens to be down or not. And as it was, I was doing other things. I got, I temporarily got the electrical system back, got the gear down, got the green light, then it failed again. But at least I know my gear is down. So this was kind of unnecessary, but I needed them to kind of like say, again, they're perpendicular to me, so I fly down through their high beams and they can, hopefully see whether the gear is down or not. I can crank a few more times. <laughs> Again, uh, I know how long I've been flying, so I know approximately how much fuel I have on board. Okay, and then we get to retract your airplanes. If I, have to make a, if I have to make a gear up landing, I either want them all the way up, or you know, I want my mains to match. I don't want one main down and one main retracted. That'll make the airplane cartwheel. Both down or both up. Nose wheel doesn't matter so much but the mains are critical that I get that. So, uh, but you send that text, okay? If you've got somebody in your phone, you send me a text uh, or somebody other than the aviator. Uh, I've, I've sent that text twice and I've received it twice. Total electrical failure, notify ATC, this is what's gonna happen, okay? I'm gonna divert to an airport that's close by or I'm gonna continue to my original destination, whatever it is I'm going to do, okay? So, kind of covered that one. If we have any questions, we can answer those later. <laughs>